There are two different things. There's a brain, the physical brain. I can bring you to, to a lab, to a magnetic scanner, and I can actually see the brain inside you. Then there's also the mind. You have no direct experience of your mind. You don't feel neurons. It's sort of ephemeral, but allows us to act in the world, to see, to hear, to smell, and to remember. The question is, how does it give rise to, to conscious sensation? And is it only the human brain, or is it also brains of elephants, whose brains are much bigger, three to four times bigger than the brain of a human? And now we want to understand the exact relationship between their brains and their minds. We've always drawn a line in the sand between humans and non-human animals. And there's enough research now to show that we may not be quite as unique as we think we are. And from what we know now of the elephant brain, there's no reason to, to think that the, the functions that we would attribute to uh, the human brain are really any different. They have sophisticated ways of communicating. They have long memories. They have possibly more complex working memory than we do. One of the first steps to understanding the elephant mind um, will be to look at whether or not elephants can understand and recognize themselves as separate from others. And that's where the mirror test comes in. When I think about elephants, I think about great minds with great contemplation abilities. You can see they're actually thinking complex thoughts, communicating with one another these complex ideas. You know, elephants, they are so, so like us in so, in so many ways. And I, I really think that if we thought about them, gave them credit for all their capability, I think the world would be a, a better place.